We got this old carrier unit. It is apparently blowing fuses. This is my first time looking at it to be fully transparent. So we're gonna find out why it's blowing fuses and we'll get to that in the video. So the disconnect is off, but we don't necessarily want to trust that, okay? Because I've come across disconnects that were bypassed internally. What we want to do is take the panel off and we want to check with our meter that the power is not present at the machine before we go on with our troubleshooting. Okay, so we have checked and we have no incoming power into our main terminal block. So now what I would normally do is do a visualization of things and check for burnt contactors like on the line side especially you want to check that because that could be a, a cause of carbon or dust tracking across and just look for any components that might look like they've burnt up and i really don't see any right now so we might have an issue where we're gonna to have to take out our meter and start searching this is the compressor contactor that's the line side of the compressor contactor that's the load side and if we loop around, the load side comes to this breaker for the compressor. So what happens is, and I'll show you, I am getting a signal to ground. So I've got my meter lead on the first load side contact to ground. And that is one of the contacts that picks up the three condenser fans, which are single phase. And we have a reading to ground. And the reason it's changing like that I'll show you why it's because the fans are spinning so do we have a problem here we're gonna look into this further so now again to the first contact on the load side to ground now we have open line because we have our condenser fan wires pulled off so what I've done here is taken my jumper cables attached to the first fan motor here I got one there and then I got one on there, brought the jumper cables over to the meter leads. It's just easier this way. And the first fan motor, I am getting 86 ohms across it. And I have stopped it moving just by shoving my wrench down in there just to stop the fan from spinning so we don't get that weird sort of reading. So we are getting resistance across the windings right now. So now what I've done is I've switched one of the leads to ground. So we're checking through the winding to ground and we have nothing showing up. So we're gonna do the same for the other two fan motors. So we've checked the second condenser fan motor and that one was okay. This is the third one, which is labeled three. So we are checking the meter leads across, across the winding here. Again, our alligator clips connected to the meter leads and we have open line across this one. All right, so remember in the beginning of the video, we were getting a reading to ground and it was all over the place because the fan was moving. Well, we're getting that reading to ground now with the third fan that we're checking, but the fan is not spinning, so the resistance is not moving. So we have 300 ohms to ground, and you can see that I've got one meter lead here on that wire, and the other one here on ground, and this is what I'm getting. So we got open line on that one, and we have 300 ohms to ground, so what we're gonna do is isolate this fan motor. With that fan motor isolated, we have the other two fan motors still up and running, it's now been running for 15, 20 minutes, no blown fuses. So what we gotta do is go out and change that condenser fan motor and capacitor. But in the meantime, we're up and running and we're cooling the space, guys. Happy HVAC.